This is probably my favourite model of iPad, and with iPadOS 26, it's somehow even better. A few weeks ago, I installed the iPadOS 26 developer beta onto my main work iPad. A really stupid idea on paper, but one that gave us a glimpse of just how transformative iPadOS 26 is going to be for GarageBand users in particular. I was especially impressed at how stable the beta was. Developer betas in particular are usually, well, just really, really buggy. So in my infinite wisdom slash stupidity, I've gone ahead and installed the iPadOS 26 developer beta on my iPad mini 6 as well. I love this thing. There's just something about the form factor of the iPad mini that just does it for me. I use this as a YouTube slash note taking slash garage band machine. I don't actually have Logic Pro installed on it at all and it's just great. Even in beta form though, iPadOS 26 actually makes it better. Now, before we dive in, a quick warning here, this is a developer beta, so it's buggy, apps do crash, and weird stuff happens sometimes. I definitely wouldn't recommend installing it on your main device, especially if you're currently working on a project. Now, you'd think the iPad mini's smaller screen wouldn't lend itself particularly well to multitasking, but iPadOS 26 changes that completely. With the new floating windows feature, you can now resize and move apps around freely, even on the Mini's 8.3 inch screen. It works shockingly well. That means I can have GarageBand open in one window and the Files app open beside it. And instead of going through that long-winded process of importing loops or samples through the loop browser, I can now just drag and drop files straight into a track. And yes, even on the iPad mini, this workflow actually feels natural, unlike the clunky stage manager integration. The new menu bar is here as well, so if you weren't aware, just swipe down or move the pointer up to the top of the screen and you'll get a full on menu bar, just like in Mac OS. This is present in most apps though, with different degrees of usefulness. In GarageBand, this gives you access to things like recent projects, playback controls, editing options like split and loop, automation tools, and loads more right at your fingertips. Again, all on the iPad mini. Now, my big fat sausage fingers do sometimes struggle to hit these menu items with 100% accuracy, but if you're using a stylus or pencil, this feels great. Here's where it gets really great for mobile musicians. As showcased in my iPad Pro video in Control Center when GarageBand is open, there's a brand new panel that lets you control exactly which mic GarageBand will use. I can switch between my iPad's built-in mic or external mics connected through my audio interface, like the Audient ID4 here, with just a tap. It even lets me toggle on global noise cancellation, which could be handy if you're recording vocals or acoustic instruments in a noisy space. This is proper system level audio routing, and yes, I'm still really excited about it. This is very much like core audio on a Mac, and I can't wait for this to land for everyone. With all of these updates, multitasking, drag and drop, mic selection, noise cancellation, that Mac style menu bar, the iPad mini genuinely feels like it could work as a super portable production studio in it. You're no longer wrestling with that screen size or the limitations of iPad OS. So is the iPad mini now a legit music making solution? Well, I mean, I think it already was, but that's just me. I think with iPad OS 26, it's definitely a lot closer to that than it was previously. It's gone from being a fun, compact sketch pad to an actual creative tool that's enjoyable to use. Let me know in the comments what you think about iPadOS 26 and if you're looking forward to the full release 
in the autumn, or if you've installed the beta already, how things are going for you. And if you want to watch me plug in three audio interfaces to an iPad at the same time using iPadOS 26, watch this video next. <laughs>